So here's problem 26 from the 2012 AP Calc multiple choice set non-calculator question. And they talk about a function g. They provide us with the first derivative of g. And the first derivative of g is defined in a weird way because the input x to this first derivative is the upper limit of integration. And then we've got some function inside that integral uh, and some parameter t being used uh, as the dummy variable. Which of the following must be true on the interval from 0 to 2? So if you look at all of these options, um, the options involve g increasing or decreasing, and then g concave up, concave down, or having an inflection point somewhere on the interval 0 to 2. So I, I read those options, and I realize I'm going to have to consider the derivative to figure out if I'm increasing or decreasing, and then the second derivative to figure out if I'm concave up or concave down. So I went and I kind of analyzed the derivative first, which was already provided. Now I did need to know what this graph, e to the negative t squared, looked like. Now I only need to really reason it out on the interval from 0 to 2. So I evaluated this function inside the integral at 0, and I got 1, right, e to the 0. And then if you evaluate it at 2, you get e to the negative fourth power. Now, e to the negative fourth power is really 1 over 2.7 to the fourth. So that's a pretty tiny fractional value. So what I had happen here on this little graph I sketched for e to the negative t squared is I just had my, my value of the function decrease until I got to the, the x value or the t value of 2. Um, now, what does that tell us about g prime? Well, g prime is a definite integral that's related to this function. This function is entirely above the x-axis on the stretch from 0 to 2. So the derivative is always positive on the interval from 0 to 2. So I, I know that I can rule out any of these options that say g is decreasing. Reason why, based on how g prime is defined, I see I'm always going to have a positive area of a positive result for this definite integral that gives us g prime. Now for the concavity part, uh, are we concave up or concave down, we are going to have to analyze the second derivative. So if I take a derivative of this, I'm going to have my second derivative. Derivative is going to rely on, this, on the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? So doing the derivative with respect to x, where x is the upper limit of integration, is basically just going to cause the, the integral and the derivative operators to essentially cancel with each other and the t the holding variable is going to get replaced with that upper limit of integration so g double prime of x is actually pretty simple i just copy this function and i put negative x excuse me i put x in place of the t um, so what can we say about this second derivative well it's defined as just e to a power and e to a power is always going to be positive no matter what ends up in the power. Uh, it might be a, a really small positive, but it's always going to end up being positive. So we're looking at a situation where g prime is always positive and g double prime is always positive. Therefore, g has to be increasing and concave up.